Kanan and to James Marita, who goes to school, says school. And kindly subscribe, leave the notification bell to get notified once I upload a video. Today we are looking at some commonly tested questions on saliva and its compounds. And today we are looking at the extractions or uh, extraction of saliva. In my diagram, it shows the three consecutive types. The process is called the French process. So this process of extraction of this one is called the French process. The France process, it normally involves the three concentric pipes. We have the innermost pipe, the innermost pipe where we have a hot compressed air, compressed at 15 atmosphere, and then it is forced through the, uh, the innermost pipe. Then we have the micro pipe, the, the air which is the hot compressed air at the pressure of 15, which has been forced uh, through the the innermost pipe, it forces the molten saliva uh, through up the middle pipe. And then we have the outermost pipe. The outermost pipe normally contains a, a superheated water, water heated above the boiling point, heated at a temperature of 170. And the reason why we have that superheated water heated at that very high temperature, it is to ensure that saliva remains in a molten stage or to melt the saliva underground. Now study the diagram and then you answer questions that follow. So this is my diagram. We have pipe A, we have pipe T, and then we have C. Then we have this as the ground surface. As I have said that this one is the innermost pipe, then we have the middle pipe, then we have the outermost pipe. Name the uses of the pipes Name the uses, uses of the pipes A, P, and a C. A, in A, we have a whole compressed air, which is compressed at 15 atmosphere, is forced down. So at A, we have whole compressed air, is forced down. In P, we have, this is where the, it is the middle pipe, a whole compressed air forces the molten saliva up through P. So we are talking of this one here. It is the molten saliva. It forces the molten saliva out through P. Then you see we have a superheated water at a temperature of 170 degrees is passing down. And of course, you need to know the purpose of this uh, the purpose of this superheated water. Normally, in this case, this superheated water it is to melt the saliva. To melt to melt the, the saliva, to melt the, the saliva underground. That's why we have this water heat at this very high temperature, or to ensure that saliva remains in a molten state. Now, give two crystalline electrons of saliva. Normally, there are two electrons of saliva, that is, Aromic saliva, which is stable at a temperature of a, a temperature above, a temperature below 96, a temperature below 96, it is stable, and then we have to drink a saliva which is stable below, and uh, when the temperature is above 96, we can have the monoclinic saliva, and when the temperature is below 96, we have the aromic saliva. So there are two crystalline forms of saliva, that is the aromic saliva. We have the aerobic saliva and then we have monoclinic saliva. Write an equation for the combustion of saliva. Combustion for saliva, we normally have saliva combining with oxygen and then we can have the saliva form oxide. Name the product form when a mixture of a saliva and iron is heated. A mixture of iron and saliva is heated. So what you can have here is a, you can have an iron here, and then this one is heated with saliva. Then we have this one as the iron two sulfide, and the observation you can make here is this one here. This one is black. So saliva iron combines with saliva to have iron two sulfide. 
and the, 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 the observation that you, you can see there, there is a formation of a black substance and that black substance is iron 2 cyber. So the name of the name of that product is just iron 2 cyber. Then the impurities found in cyber. Impurities found in cyber during this first process, you can talk of sand, you can talk of soil, you can talk of clay, or you can talk of silicon. Those are some of the impurities that you can so that are normally found in during the extraction of this cyber through the first process. Now, state the physical properties of silica that makes it possible to be extracted by the above method. To be extracted by this method, there is here the low melting point, then we have silica is invisible with water, it is insoluble in water, and then the density of silica milk and silica is lower than that of water. Those are the physical properties that makes, uh, that makes this silica to be extracted through the flask process. Then of course give two uses of saliva. There are various uses of saliva whereby you can see it is used for uh, fluidization of rubber, manufacture of salivic acid in the conduct process. It can also be used as a as a as a as a can also be used as a as a it can also be used as a drag agent, as a, a bleaching agent in the wood fiber industry, so you can be used as a bleach. And the bleaching agent. Now explain how the plastic saliva is formed. How is plastic saliva is formed? Plastic saliva is normally formed where we have you heat some powdered saliva in a test tube. So you heat some powdered saliva in a test tube and then it melts into a yellow liquid. Then from there you put this molten saliva into cold water. On solidification, the plastic saliva is obtained. That is a simple steps on how the plastic saliva is normally prepared. Then stage two properties that makes fully canalized rubber possess, uh, possesses as a result of fully canalization. Stage two properties that fully canalized rubber possesses as a result of fully canalization. So the properties are normally three or just, just to say two, we have tava, they, they improve the flex, flexibility of the tile and it makes the tough, so we have tava, we have nani sticky and then we have uh, elastic. So those are the properties that the next fully canalization rubber possess as a result of free canalization. So I said in this one here we have two uh, other jobs of cyber. In the diagram presentation, you can present diagram, we have this one as this, when you see this diagram, you will know that this one is rhombic saliva, and then when you see this one here, we have an electric saliva. So you can present the two, two crystalline forms of saliva using the diagram, where we have this one, this diagram represents a monoclinic uh, saliva, and this one represents a rhombic uh, saliva. Kindly follow my channel, you click the notification bell, you get notified once I launch a new city. Thank you.